in the process of rewriting everything, there's been a whole bunch of really cool new user interface improvements as well. So now everything is automatically adapted to your IFC version and the UI you'll find is generally a lot cleaner. You know, there's a lot less um, clutter in the UI, all that's been cleaned up. And now there are sort of a standardized um, user experience across different modules. So previously when it was first built, it kind of just evolved over time, but I've taken a fresh look at that. And now every single module works in a, a more or less consistent way. So that's really exciting for users because they they just look at a module and it's pretty obvious how to use. And I guess one of the biggest improvements is that it understands um, the IFC version that you're using. So for example, uh, if I click on this object and I see it has a predefined type of floor and I press the edit button, now you can see that I can just click on the dropdown of floor and it will uh, show me what options are available. And this is specific to the IFC version. So in some applications, you, you, you don't know any of this, right? You'll have to actually look up the spec and it, it's really not user friendly. Um, so this allows you to do it. Um, but also this will adapt based on your IFC version. So I guess the best way to explain that is if I open up a brand new Blender BIM and we compare the two. So this over here is an IFC 2x3 project. So let's say I, I'm creating a uh, brand new object and I can select what type of IFC element it is. And you can see this is what's available to me. And this is what's available in IFC 2x3. But then if I switch to uh, this one and I create a new project that is IFC 4, not IFC 2x3, and now I want to assign a class, you can see all this available to me. And just things like that, that make the user realize, ah, okay, this is the impact. This is the, uh, of, of using a particular IFC version. Here are the options that are really available to me. Uh, in the past, Blender BIM didn't have that. In the past, Blender BIM always assumed you were gonna work with IFC 4, but if you really, really wanted to, you could use 2x3, but it would always default to four. And it was cumbersome, yeah. Yeah, and, and this would confuse a lot of users because sometimes they would, uh, I guess, upgrade their file without realizing <laughs> and, uh -huh. or, or, and or, or downgrade if, if they were trying to fix it. And this creates a lot of issues, but now this guides the user on what's possible. So I guess for those who haven't seen it before, this is the difference between IFC4 and IFC 2x3. So if you haven't switched yet, please do, because that's all of the information that you are missing out on. Huge, wow, yeah. And it's the same when filling out property sets. You know, you don't need to map it and read up the spec. So for example, if I'm editing the wall comment, I can just press edit and it knows, you know, uh, the status will set it to um, existing. Uh, let's say it's, it's combustible. And uh, let's say this is a load bearing wall. So, and there's, there's number sliders as well. And then I can just press the okay button. And I guess one of the things this also highlights is whether or not a value is um, null or not. So, this is a concept that I think a lot of BIM applications have missed. Um, how do you know whether the property exists because the computer has generated it with a default value or a blank value, or the user has actually explicitly looked at it and assigned it a blank value or is going to fill it out or has to fill it out? And there, there is no differentiation between this usually in BIM programs. Whereas now I can see that, uh, pre so previously is external was unchecked, but it truly was unchecked. This this uh, filled in circle means that that was a, a property that an ex uh, the, the user or application had explicitly set that to be unchecked. I know it's not that the user just forgot about it. If, if this were blue and empty, this would mean that the user has not specified it at all. It's not just, it's not true, it's not false, it's it's really unspecified. So 
the ability to know whether or not something is specified. So I can say, okay, now I'm specifying this and we'll say, all right, there we go. Now it, it truly is specified. You, you must click on that dot as well. Uh, that's a bit annoying. Tell you what, we'll fix that in the next release. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah, yeah. It should uh, have um, be automatically, right? When you check that box, it should uh, be activated. Correct. Correct. We'll fix that. We'll make it so that once you toggle something, it auto updates. So, so it's so nice to hear that. Oh well. Uh, <laughs> well but, but there you go. Um, I, I guess this is just one of the, the usability improvements um, that that people can expect.